Welcome to Bard's Breathe Easy Service Training. My name is Rick Downey. Today we're going to take a look at Communication Error Diagnostics. We're going to cover the LC6000 with the Megatech, Multitech, and Fusion Tech WR units. This will also include the LV1000 and the HR series which are Verizon specific equipment. Communications errors result in many calls to tech support for assistance. Most of the communication error alarms are the result of an installation issue. Therefore, before you call tech support for communication problem, please follow these instructions and verify the installation is correct. In this video, we'll walk you through a quick check of the installation and setup. Verify that the software versions are correct. Verify units and controller are set up correctly. We'll also verify the correct materials are used and the communication wiring is installed correctly. And then we'll verify that the correct wire is connected and lines up to the landing point for your communication wiring. The software code is the equipment identifier matching up software to the correct unit or controller. Uh, implied example would be the WTS is for the WR Fusion Tech. MGS-1000 is for the Megatech. First step in unit installation is verifying that the most current version of software is installed on the system and all similar units have the same version. For example, if there are four Multitech and two Megatech units, the Multitechs all need to be the same version of MTS-1000, that's the unit identifier, and that's 3.2.0. The Megatechs all need MGS 1000.1.2.0. At the time of this production, these were the most current version listed on our website and available for a download. Those can change at any time and they're always posted on the home page of bardhvac.com. In the lower right corner, it says software download. Click there and you can check for the most current version. For Verizon installations using the LV1000 and HR series Fusion Techs, the first two digits of the software versions numbers will match even though there is a different software for the controller and the units. Current versions at the time of this video for the Fusion Tech, the FTS1000.3.1.0, and the LVS1000.3.1. Dot one. So the first two digits always match up on these versions. To verify that you have the current version of software, you can go to bardhvac.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and click on Software Download. Here you'll find all of the software for our PLC equipment, WR series, that's the Fusion Tech that goes with the LC6000, the Multitech, the Megatech, LC6000, HR, and LV are Verizon specific software. Here we've got installation instructions next to each of the software versions. If you click on our video library, you can find a video to help you install the software. Here's an LC6000. We need to have the information screen up here in the lower right corner. Click on Enter. Click Enter and then scroll up and here is our software version. Let's check a Fusion Tech unit. So I've got the information screen up. Hit enter, scroll up. This is a Fusion Tech. This is an HR which identifies it as a Verizon specific software. Here we've got a Megatech unit. I've got the I up. We want to go into the information screen, scroll up. Megatech wall unit. Here's our software version. Let's take a look at a multi-tech. We've got the information screen available by clicking on enter. Scroll up. This gives us our software version. Also, in the units, we want to make sure that we have a unique address for each unit in the system. To do that, we have to go in and put our password in. I'll use the technician password on this one. When we get to sysconfig, all we have to do is click enter, and here's my unit address and my zone. 
Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Next, let's look at the materials used. We need to verify that the correct material is in place. Did we use 18-2 shielded with a drain? And is it under 500 meters? Are the EMI line filters in place at the ends of the daisy chain as shown below? So there's one line filter at each end of the daisy chain. It doesn't matter what position the controller's in. That could be in the middle as shown in the top or on the end as shown on the bottom. In the lower left corner is a picture of our communication wire. This is 18-2 stranded. You can see the shield wrapped around the wires and the drain is exposed. In the center left picture, we're showing you how to install an EMI filter. Simply make a loop with the wire and clamp that around. That filter is designed to keep our wire from becoming an antenna. There are two color-coded conductors in the 18-2 and an uninsulated drain. If you start out with red on positive on the controller, Red must hit positive on every piece of equipment in the daisy chain and black must hit negative. These are polarity sensitive and must be connected as shown for each unit and controller in the following slides. Incorrect polarity will prevent communication. Also note that communication wire cannot be located in the same conduit with line voltage and the drain is only attached to the ground in one location. If you connect the drain to ground in more than one location, it will cause stray voltage to interfere intermittently with your communication setup. Now that we've verified the installation and setup are correct, we need to verify the field bus connection. Make sure it lines up with your field connections on terminals one and two. On the PLC at the right, the top wire and the plug that you can see goes to terminal one, and we put a black dot on terminal one where this wire connects. The bottom wire should be on terminal two where the white dot is. For Verizon, if you're working with an LV controller, we need to verify the connection on the field bus as well. So the top wire on the field bus connection plug should go to terminal 42, which is marked negative, and it would be opposite on the terminal strip of the wires that you're connecting in the field. The bottom wire in that plug, terminal 43, which is marked positive on the LV1000 terminal strip. The line filter only goes on the LV1000 if it's at the end of the daisy chain, and also note that the drain is only grounded one time anywhere in the chain. If you're working with an LC6000, we need to verify that field bus connection. The top wire on the field bus connection plug should go to terminal 56 and the bottom wire in that plug, terminal 57 on the LC6000 terminal strip, opposite your field communication wires, as shown at the left with the black and red circles. Now your wire colors on the PLC may vary depending on the age of the controller. If you're working with a multi-tech, the top wire on the field bus connection plug should go to terminal marked positive and the bottom wire on that plug, the terminal marked negative on the multi-tech terminal strip opposite your field connection wiring. On the entire PLC product line, all of our PLC units, the drain is continuous for the entire length of the chain and is grounded only once. The controller or unit located in the center of the chain has two wires. The ends only have one wire entering the unit or the controller. If you're working with a Megatech unit, the field installed communication wire goes to terminals one and two as shown on the right and these are polarity sensitive. We need to verify the field bus connection inside the unit. So the top wire on the field bus connection plug, as shown at the left, should go to terminal two negative, and the bottom wire in that plug, terminal one positive on the Megatech terminal strip, opposite your field communication wires. And on the right, you can see the arrow pointing down to one and two. This is where our PLC connects to the terminal. And on the top of that terminal, where it says 
positive Modbus and negative Modbus, that's where our field wiring connects to that terminal strip. If you have one single unit showing a communication alarm, we need to check the polarity at that unit. It is possible, even if it's a center unit, to reverse the polarity on one unit and all the others will still communicate if they are wired with the correct polarity. If you have no units communicating, if the shelter controller is on one end or take a unit next to the shelter controller if it's not on an end and disconnect everything beyond the controller so your controller is only connected to one unit. Check for a communication error. If it's communicating, add the next unit to it and so on until you locate the communication problem. Now thanks for watching this Breathe Easy service training edition and once you verified the installation is correct and completed your troubleshooting options, please contact BARD's technical service group if more assistance is required. 1-419-636-0439